Hello everyone. My name is Kevin Ogley and I work at the US Embassy in Nicosia, Cyprus. And this is my daughter, Catherine. Hello, Dad. Hello. Did you know, Catherine, that over 70% of the world's surface is covered in water? No. Or that some places, giant trees grow directly from the ocean? No. Well, today we're going to explore the planet's delicate ecosystems in our reading of The Deep Blue by Charlotte Gillane. I don't know about you, Catherine, but I'm excited to hear about the ocean and the wonderful natural habitats. Shall we read together? Yes, let's get started. The Deep Blue by Charlotte Gillane, illustrations by Lou Baker-Smith. World of water. Seen from space, Earth is a ball of blue. The oceans make up over 70% of our planet's surface, from the vast Pacific to the smallest seas. The crashing waves, dark depths, and still turquoise waters of our oceans are home to a multitude of life. Much of the ocean is yet to be discovered and explored by humans. The world's oceans are one immense connected body of water. Although there are five distinct oceans, the Pacific, Atlantic, Indian, Southern and Arctic, they are interlinked with currents flowing through them all. These currents create our weather and bring life to the seas by carrying food and warmth around the globe. Some currents move only on the surface, but others travel in the deepest reaches of the sea. The Pacific is the largest and deepest ocean, bigger than all the continents and almost all the other oceans put together. Its name means peaceful. But the waters of the Pacific can rise up to swell and crash in terrifying storms. Life on our planet depends on the oceans. More than half of the oxygen we need to live is produced by plants in our seas. The world of water is full of wonders, but it is also vital for all things living on Earth. The pull of the tide. Water laps and creeps up the beach under a moonlit sky. Soon the shore has vanished under water as waves roll steadily onto the land. By daybreak, the sea has slipped away, leaving shining pebbles and gleaming mud flats to dry in the morning sun. In and out, in and out. The tides are constantly moving. Moved by the moon, the water in Earth's oceans is pulled to make tides. The moon's gravity drags the sea so it bulges out at high tide, moving the water towards the coastline. As Earth spins, parts of the ocean move away from the moon's pull and there is a low tide. This happens twice a day. When the tide goes out, parts of the seabed that are normally covered by the ocean are revealed. Tiny creatures are left in shallow pools until the waters crawl back up the beach, in and out, in and out. The tides are the rhythmic heartbeat of the ocean. Army of Urchins the armoured army is marching across the seabed. The kelp forest is under attack as purple spiky sea urchins begin to gather. The vast hungry herd grazes on the kelp, their sharp bony mouths scraping and ripping into sea the, the seaweed to shreds. Their teeth are constantly worn down and replaced as they chew they wear their way onwards. The sea urchins swarm through the forest devouring the tough kelp holdfasts and consuming the seaweed that provides safety and shelter for many living things. In a few months, the kelp forest will be completely ravaged. Can anything stop these spiny destroyers? The Forest Guardian. Wrapped in strands of slippery kelp, a sea otter dozes in the warm sun. His thick fur absorbs the heat 
as he sleeps. But another sea otter is ready to eat. Splash! She dives into the bottom of the kelp strands, spotting her prickly prey as her streamlined body shoots downwards. She grabs a sea urchin and a rock from the seabed and speeds back to the surface. Now she floats on her back. Holding the rock on her stomach, bash! She hits the urchin against the rock to break it open before eating it. Kelp forests give otters a safe place to live and they in turn stop the urchins from destroying their seaweed home. Trees in the ocean. In the warmer waters of tropical coastlines, such as around Indonesia, trees rise out of the sea. Magical mangrove forests fringe the shores for hundreds of thousands of kilometers, their roots submerged in seawater when the tide is high. How do the mangroves survive in salty water? These tough, tangled trees can remove the salt from their system through their leaves or else block it from entering their roots in the first place. The mangrove sprawling roots twist and curve above the seabed. When the tide is high, these roots provide a safe place for young fish and other creatures to feed and hide from predators while they grow. The twisting intertwined root systems also help to hold the coastline together, stopping the tide from dragging soil away from the shore. When a storm hits or high waves crash, the mangrove barriers slow the movement of water and help stop the land being worn away. A mangrove seeds begin to grow while they are still on, while they are still on their parent tree. When the time is right, they drop into the ocean and float away until they settle on a new shoreline. Then they will put down roots of their own and another mangrove forest will start to grow. Graceful grazers. A mother and her calf move lazily among the mangroves off the coast of Florida, USA. Their bulky bodies swim slowly and gracefully through warm, shallow water as their mother searches for plants to eat. These gentle grey creatures are manatees. Every few minutes they push the tips of their noses out of the water to breathe before silently sinking down once more. When the tide is high, the mangroves provide a haven of food for the mother whose baby is still feeding on her milk. She flaps her fan-shaped tail and pulls herself along the seabed using her flippers, searching the sheltered shoreline for her next meal. The manatee grazes on algae, weeds and seagrass growing in the watery meadows near the mangrove roots. She pulls herself out of the water to nibble the mangrove leaves. The manatee feeds for up to eight hours a day and then rests in the shelter of the mangroves, keeping her calf close by. A marine meadow. A green meadow sweeps across the seabed in shallow turquoise waters near the Australian coast. This carpet of grass provides food and shelter for a throng of living things. Seagrass is not a seaweed like kelp. This plant has roots, stems and leaves and even produces flowers. It grows in warm water waters so it can bask in the sunlight it uses to make energy and oxygen. This ocean grassland works hard to keep the sea healthy. Where seagrass grows, the water is cleaner. The seagrass meadow can absorb and store 30 to 5 times as much carbon dioxide as an area of rainforest the same size. Turtle grass. The green sea turtle travels enormous distances as it migrates across the ocean. The seagrass meadow is a welcome sanctuary on its journey, 
providing a feast of plants in the shallow waters. When the tide is low, it is safe for the turtle to graze, sometimes eating two kilograms of grass a day. It slices through the tips of the blades easily with its saw-like mouth. This trimming of the plant's stems helps, keep the, helps them to grow, and when the tide turns and the water becomes deeper, the turtle must look out for sharks and other predators. It's time for this turtle to move on. A teeming reef. Off the coast of Northeast Australia, a living wonder stretches for over 2,000 kilometers. An immense stretch of coral reefs and islands make up the Great Barrier Reef, the largest living structure uh, on Earth. Thousands of different species make their home in the vibrant world of the colorful coral. Shoals of tiny, brightly colored fish dart through the sun-dappled water. Dazzling royal angelfish nibble the coral. They shoot off and find a hiding place as soon as a shark shadow appears overhead. A striped orange clownfish seeks safety in the, safe, in the stinging tentacles of an anemone. Slime on the clownfish's body protects it from the anemone's stingy, uh, toxic sting. Predators don't dare to come near the fish here. A tiny seahorse bobs through the shallow water, propelled by its delicate fluttering fin. It uses its curled tail to grip the coral and anchor itself safely on the reef. Something is squeezing out of a crevice deep in the reef. A blue ringed octopus is on the hunt. It is camouflaged while it lies in wait for its prey. But if it is threatened, it will turn bright yellow with flashing blue rings. This mesmerizing octopus is one of the most venomous creatures in the ocean. Reef Guard. The coral is not safe. A band of crown of thorns starfish is ransacking a reef in the southern Pacific Ocean. They are devouring the coral and leaving devastation in their wake. What can stop these poisonous predators with their vicious spines and enormous appetite? Luckily, the reef has a determined defender, a tiny red speckled coral guard crab, makes its home on the reef where it can feed safe from the predators. The crab will fight to preserve its habitat. When hordes of starfish threaten its sanctuary, the crimson crab pinches and nips at their tube-like feet, sending them away. This snappy sentinel also uses its claws to stop coral-eating snails from damaging its home. A bleached reef. The ocean's reefs face a much more terrible threat. Earth's climate is heating up, and so the water in the sea is warming. When the temperature of the ocean around the reef rises too high, the algae that live on each polyp leave the coral. The algae give the coral its bright colors and supply it with food. With the algae gone, the coral can no longer get its food from the sunlight and turns pale the reef becomes bleached, with life leaching away. The bare bones of the once bustling paradise now stand still and stark on the ocean floor. Stinging Swarm. Out in the open ocean, a throng of stinging creatures is being carried by the current. Delicate jelly-like blobs bob and sway in the sea with long tentacles streaming below them. This bloom of jellyfish may grow to cover several square kilometers, following the clouds of plankton that are spreading through the water. Translucent, soft jellyfish can be brightly colored or almost see-through. When night falls and the ocean becomes a vast expanse of darkness, some jellyfish light up. Their bioluminescent bodies swoosh through the black water 
like strange glowing aliens. Jellyfish have been drifting around our oceans for millions of years, feeding on tiny sea life. They can quickly grow or shrink in size, depending on how much food is around them. They, can stay, they stay close together so they can easily reproduce. Boneless, bloodless, brainless jellyfish are mostly made of water. They squeeze their rubbery dome-shaped bodies to push themselves through the sea, their stinging tentacles trailing behind them. These dangling stingers entangle and, para and paralyze prey with poison as the jellyfish passes by. The jellyfish then opens its mouth in the middle of its body and digests its meal before, before pushing out any waste. Now the alien swarm moves on with the current, swishing and bobbing away. Plastic Ocean There's another great swarm floating in the open ocean. What creatures have come together to build up this enormous mass of colour? Is this a gathering made up of plants or animals? Neither. This is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, a colossal area of the ocean covered in plastic rubbish. Millions of tons of plastic are floating through the oceans, but currents are bringing great patches of it together where it drifts in a, in a deadly slick. Seabirds get tangled in plastic and can't fly. Turtles mistake floating plastic bags for jellyfish and swallow them. Whales' stomachs fill with plastic. It could be hundreds of years before the plastic is worn away by the sun and broken up into minuscule particles. Even then, those tiny pieces will stay floating in the ocean, becoming part of the food chain and harming many creatures. In an ocean full of life, the sea of plastic does not belong. Oh. Well, let's, 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 let's look at the penguins, you ready? All right. <laughs> the frozen ocean. Far away from fiery lava, the frozen ocean is a world of ice. Huge blue-white giants float in the freezing water. These icebergs drift in the Arctic and Southern Oceans sitting on the surface of polar seas. These vast frozen crags are huge chunks of freshwater ice that broke away from the coastline. Icebergs creak and crash as they split away from a glacier and float away, carried by the wind and the ocean's currents. The bulk of an iceberg is hidden beneath the water, with just a tip visible above the surface. In the warm summer months, these hulking ice chunks float freely. They can tip over and flip without warning as they melt, sending huge waves across the water around them. The w in the winter, the icebergs become still, frozen into the sea around them. The Unicorn of the Sea. The unicorn of the sea is emerging through the ice in the Arctic Ocean raising a sword to the sky. The narwhal is a toothed whale with a spiral spear-like tusk that extends from the male's upper jaw. This tusk is an extra long tooth that can sense changes and movement in the icy ocean. Narwhals spend the winter under the Arctic sea, ice, hunting in groups and feeding on fish, shrimp and squid. Like all mammals, they need to breathe air, so they pop up through cracks in the ice to take a breath before diving down deep to feed again. Melting sea ice. At, at the planet's poles, the oceans freeze in winter. When the sun disappears for months and temperatures plummet, sea ice forms on the, on the surface of the Arctic and Southern Oceans. When summer returns, the ice retreats. Winter and summer expand and retreat. So it has been for thousands of years. 
This changing ice, this changing sea ice is vital for life and the oceans. It stops the Arctic and Antarctic coasts being worn away by wind and waves. Predators such as the polar bear travel out to sea on the ice, on the ice for miles during winter, searching for prey. Other animals such as walruses and penguins can rest on the ice in between hunts. When the ice melts in summer, nutrients frozen into the seawater are released into the ocean once more, encouraging plankton to grow. Without the ice, these creatures cannot survive. But now the planet is getting warmer. Less of the ocean is freezing in winter and the sea ice that remains is melting faster than before. Without the white ice to reflect the sun's rays away from the poles, the oceans are getting even warmer, meaning even less sea is cold enough to freeze. The thinning and loss of sea ice is affecting the climate all over the earth. This change will make a big difference to the life in our oceans. The end. Wow, I had no idea that there was so much diversity in the world's oceans. Did you, Catherine? No, I didn't. We're all one tiny part of this big, beautiful planet. But our, but our actions have an effect on everything from coral reefs to penguins, ocean forests and sea otters. Isn't that your favourite animal? Sea otters are my favourite animal, yes. Is there anything that's, from our reading that surprised you, Catherine? What about you? Can you spot any plants or animals from this book around Cyprus? Well, I hope you join us for more stories and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.